Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to New Orleans, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE. theCUBE is the leader in live tech coverage, and we're here covering Veeam on 2017. This is day two for us. Paul Mattis is here. He's the vice president of global, the Global Cloud Group at Veeam. Paul, good to see you. Hey, great to be here, guys. Hosting, Thanks for having me in. You're welcome. Hosting the conference this morning, throwing Peter McKay under the bus <laughs> a little bit. That was kind of funny. He's going to get you in a headlock <laughs> later, no doubt. But uh, you know, it's funny. Funny. It's great. Veeam on is an experience for people. You know, it's not just about the hardcore learning, which is a lot of that going on, but it's about having fun. Yeah. And a lot of people here are having fun, and you guys embrace that, it's great. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's part of our culture, right? Um, I, I think that's why it's a great company. It's one of the reasons why I came here. Uh, and, and listen, if you can't have fun doing something you love, there's something wrong. So yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep that up. A lot of sports analogies going on too, which we love in theCUBE. I was using, <laughs> you know, sports angles, and so you guys seem like you're Pretty competitive, you're not afraid to, to put it out there. So give us the lay of the land, what's happening in the marketplace. So on the cloud specifically, um, this is an area of major growth for us um, at, at Veeam. I think um, it, it's certainly a competitive landscape, no question about that. Um, but I think you know, we have some advantages given our lineage and where we've, where we've evolved from, from a, an on-prem organization into the cloud. Um, the, the cloud market's moving very rapidly. You heard me talk about that this morning a little bit, about the pace of cloud adoption. I think it's happening much more quickly um, than we've ever seen. Uh, and uh, we, I, I haven't talked to anyone here and had dozens and dozens of conversations who haven't talked about having some kind of cloud strategy or trying to figure out how that impacts their go forward planning um, in IT. You gave some I IDC stats. I wanted to ask you about that, 46%. I think by yeah. 2019, 2019 right. uh, are going to be doing cloud, and I presume that meant on both on-prem cloud. Correct. And, uh, so, cloud being an operating model, not necessarily a destination. Th right? That's right. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. What, what does that mean? So yeah, so you, you hear Danny and I talk about this all the time. Is that um, I, I'm I'm not I've been doing the cloud since you know 2010 when I was with uh, Azure at Microsoft, and um, everybody talks about moving to the cloud as if that's it, you know, once you're there, it's over with. Um, the reality is, it, you need to think of the cloud as a way to deliver business results and deliver business solutions. So, um, just getting to the cloud doesn't mean you're over, doesn't mean you don't have to think about things like availability and data protection and backup and disaster recovery. So, the journey to the cloud is, I, I think it's sort of a, it's a step, <laughs> right? And then once you're there, there's a whole lot more that you have to do once you're there. Yeah, Paul, one of the things I've been saying for a couple of years is when it comes to cloud, follow the applications and follow the data. Uh, you know, you said you worked on Azure. I mean, no, no doubt that you know Azure has lots of applications. You know, business productivity. I think Mark Rosinovich did a great job this yeah, morning absolutely. laying that out. Um, Virtualization was kind of a tool uh, that you know applications sat on top. W what's that maturation that you see of customers as to how they think about their data and their applications and where where the, where things live? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, I, I think they're they're getting much smarter about about how they uh, how they separate and divide those things intelligently, um, especially when you think about things like um, you know Mark talked this morning about Stretch DB uh, yeah. moving into Azure, and so uh, customers are are having to rethink all of that because the cloud really does change how you have to think about application architecture, application deployment, especially as you, as you do uh, you know, division of data application and, and sort of the entire architecture end to end. So um, I think we're still early days, quite frankly. Uh, I, I think for as much as cloud is in the buzz and we, you know, we love where we're evolving to as a cloud organization, the market in general is still early days uh, and there's a lot of work yeah. uh, left to do there. Paul, what, what visibility do, do you give customers and how do you help when it comes to the cost of all of this? There, there, there's so much, you know, it, it's oftentimes FUD in the marketplace yeah. as to, oh well, you know, public cloud's super expensive, no wait, owning it yourself <laughs> is always expensive, you should always rent yeah. versus buy. You know, how do you in, inject yourself into that conversation? Great, great you know, question, and this is, you know, this is something that has been come up since day one, um, and it's, the assumption is you've got commodity hardware, you've got scale, so you've got decreasing cost. Um, the reality is it's workload, it's entirely workload dependent, right? There are some there are some workloads that you want to put into the cloud, absolutely you ex experience amazing economics. We talked today about the scale out uh, backup repository model taking advantage of blob story, perfect example. Um, one of the things customers need to think about is in addition to, to those things is ingress and egress costs. It's not just the cost of storage in the cloud, you have things that surround that in order to make it 
make it workable and make it really, really valuable. So one of the things we are doing now with customers is we've, we're starting to work through and develop models to help them think through that um, uh, in various stages of um, network costs, storage costs, and being able to give them some tools that really help them make those decisions. It's not an easy, it's not an easy task by any means because uh, you know, at, the, at the senior level, executives seem to say, well, everybody's saving money in the cloud. Why aren't we there? Why aren't, why, why aren't we experiencing that? When you get into the details, it's a little more complicated. Um, but at the end of the day, the right workload in the right cloud infrastructure, absolutely economic advantages, and more importantly, business advantages. Right? Doesn't, doesn't the savings or business impact really come from what we were talking about earlier, the operating model? Um, I, Alan Nance, who was the former CIO of Philips, who's on theCUBE, and he said, if you don't change your operating model, you're going to just barely scratch yeah. the surface, surface of, 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 of benefits. Uh, scratch the surface of benefits, and, and so I wonder if we could explore that a little bit. Is that what you're seeing in, in, in the marketplace, that people that lift and shift? Maybe there's an advantage that you're shifting CapEx to OpEx, but it's really not moving the No, that, that I totally agree, that's not, and, and it's always frustrated me a little bit that the economic end of it really seems to dominate a lot of the conversation based on perception. The, the reality is, yes, this is, this is about changing the operating model and changing the ability of the organization to map to customer demand and map to market demand. The cloud does provide that, and you, you can't just, just lift and shift. Yeah, that's okay for some things, but you really have to rethink, okay, if I have this agility and the ability to deliver solutions in a, in a cloud, what does that really mean? How do I really have to think through that from end to end? Not just, okay, I'm gonna, going back to our earlier question, I'm going to put that in the cloud and we're done. You know, um, you absolutely, you, it, you have to rethink everything when you're moving to the cloud from an applications perspective. And then from from Veeam's perspective, when you think about cloud, obviously you featured you know Azure up there today. You guys have talked about you know affinity with AWS, but there's a lot of cloud providers. Oh, so yeah. eighteen thousand you know. of them for us. And so, and some of those may be managed hosting, but the business model is similar to cloud. So what are you seeing in terms of the market's highly fragmented today? Yeah. It's very localized. Uh, do you, in your view, will it stay that way? Will you see substantial consolidation, or will it be more like the services markets typically are, which is very local, very fragmented, zillions of companies? <laughs> I think, and we think, that there will continue to be a consolidation in this part of the market. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, there's been an explosion of, of providers, and what happens is, how do you differentiate if you're a provider in that market? Right? What is your secret sauce? What makes you more attractive than uh, another provider? And so we're already seeing consolidation uh, globally um, for organizations. So what what will happen? What we think will happen is yes, there will be there will be some that are very niche, very specialized that continue to have you know great success. Um, but we will see organizations coming together. Increasingly, what we're seeing is. Um, providers wrapping new value-added services around their offering, right? This is how they differentiate. We're also seeing uh, service providers that are starting to verticalize, so specializing in a particular healthcare or financial services market um, as a way to provide value uh, and differentiation for themselves. It's not, it's not going to just, and this is why one of the things that we've you know, done in, in Veeam is, yes, we will continue to grow the, the provider base, but really focusing on ones that differentiate and add value to customers and can partner really, really well with Veeam. Paul, uh, Veeam kind of grew up right at the time that not only was VMware uh, you know, exploding on the market, but there was a new you know, virtualization administrator that didn't exist before, and Veeam helped solve you know, a, a really salient pain point that they had. Can you talk to us about when it comes to cloud? You know, who are you selling to? Um, community's very different in a very fragmented cloud world than you know, that, that, that kind of big VMware community that we all know. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's interesting because we're, we're clearly in an evolution at, at Veeam. Um, Veeam's legacy, very squarely focused in IT, uh, and the IT, IT pro community, that won't change. That will not change. But as you heard from all of our messaging here over the past couple of days, what we, what we really want to continue to evolve to is understanding from a business perspective what is the business value of driving agility, or driving agility and availability. Right? And so that is now a conversation at a different level. You're talking a CIO level, you're talking COO level, um, and that's an evolution. Um, you know, it's an easy conversation to have when you're talking about a bits and bytes perspective of how do the bits move and what are these feature functions, um, but you'll see us continually now relate this to what are the business outcomes, what are the business risks, why do you need to have an availability strategy, and why is Veeam the choice 
for that. So your positioning is this, as an availability specialist, you know, no question about that. Uh, I want to start by talking a little bit about the market for that. So there's, there's multi-cloud, there's hybrid cloud that you've talked about, this, you know, sometimes we call it inter-clouding, mm. but you are positioning, the strategy is positioning in the middle of all that as the availability, the best at availability always on. Um, so first of all, how big is that market? Uh, can you talk a little bit about the TAM, however you look at it, maybe not hardcore numbers, but if you have them, we'd, we'd love it, but how do you look at that? Well, I think Peter um, presented some, some data in his keynote on Tuesday, and I, I, we're, we see that the total addressable market is in the six to nine billion dollar range, um, which, is, which is pretty massive. If we can capture just a fraction of that, you know, we're going to easily blow through our goals, our stated goals of getting to uh, a billion, a billion five in the next couple of years. Right. So. Um, and that's why we're going to we we will continue to focus across the spectrum of those platforms, right? You heard us talk about that's the core. We grew up in virtualization, now physical network attack storage, but we're, we and we won't lose that. But now, understanding how all the different cloud assets and cloud platforms intersect that that whole market is is massive and will continue to grow. It's interesting. I I we were I was talking the other night with an analyst um, about cloud predictions. Or the, and we said, we'd love to go back and, and look at the last four or five years of predictions from analysts and see you know, where did they land? Where did they really end up? And I went back, and I, this is not a, you know, an in-depth, uh, you know, robust survey, but going back a few years, looking at all the estimates of cloud market growth, they were all wrong, and they were all wrong on the low side, right? And it's hard sometimes to get analysts to not overhype things, right? But everyone that I looked at, it was more, it was more, the reality turned out to be greater than what the prediction was. Yeah, it's a, the definition of a disruptive technology right. is we're usually horrible at forecasting <laughs> it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, which is a good thing, but. Um, so in that sort of center of the cloud, if, if we can call it that, uh, um, explain to people why Veeam and not Say a higher level of abstraction, like VMware, for example. Um, them trying to be sort of, even though they're not availability specialists, but they're pretty good at availability, um, and, and, and people are concerned about managers of managers. Why does Veeam win in that scenario? I think Veeam wins in that scenario given the breadth of our capability, given the breadth of what we do, thing number one. Um, given the breadth of our ecosystem, number two, we don't have all the answers, but we have an amazing partner ecosystem that does. Uh, and number three, I would say the simplicity, yeah. right? This, this, this mantra that we have at Veeam of it just works, um, that's very, very valuable. I heard, you know, just wandering around here, unsolicited, people don't know who I am when I'm walking with my badge off, and I've heard multiple times, you know, they're not kidding when they say the it just works thing. That's something that we will never, ever get away from, and that's a, that's a clear differentiator for us. We were talking, um, we did a breakout session the other day, Danny and I, and we were with a, a number of service providers, and they asked, well, you know, we had these canonical examples of, of what we're doing, and they asked a few questions, well, why, why can't we do this? And, and Danny and I would look back and say, well, you can do that, but it's not to the point where we have it yet where we say, it just works. There's a way to string it together, there's a way Veeam can solve that problem, um, but we need to continue to improve engineering in order to get it to the point where it just works, to make it that simple, elegant, and that's a huge difference. So, so it's, it's not, the premise there is it's not a zero-sum game, certainly between you and VMware because of the simplicity and the integration that you do right. with, with VMware. Right. Um, very interesting dynamic going on in the marketplace. It's early days, but you guys are, I love the positioning, it's clean and, uh, and it's focused. Yeah, no so. thanks, I'm glad because we, we love the feedback. It's something we work really, really hard at. Um, you know, Veeam is in a, a great period of transition, you know, bringing Peter on, the leadership team that, that Peter's brought in. Um, it, that's really, really important that we're able to communicate where we're going and, and how we position because we are so passionate about it. Um, it, it you, you just you want to make sure that the words come out well and that the, that the messaging is proper and that the, our strategy is, is locked on. So. All right, we'll give you the last word on Veeam, Veeam on 2017. Bumper sticker is the, the trucks are pulling away. <laughs> what does it say? I, I mean, I think it's an amazing event. It's my first Veeam on. Um, I have been blown away by the, the, the energy and, and the information that we've shared. I think we have a lot of exciting things that are coming down the pike and we just, we just can't be thankful enough for the great participation and um, look forward to the future. All right, Paul Mattis, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hey, thanks guys. All right, you're welcome. Keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest at theCUBE. We're live from Veeam On 2017 from New Orleans. Right back.